World without commandments. Sinner's paradise. Satan's kingdom. When we say that the commandments are not absolute, we are contradicting the supreme law of God. Our God is an immutable being and he ordained the Ten Commandments of his law as an absolute condition to find holiness and to moderate man in his concupiscence, thus opening the way to salvation through repentance, conversion, and the life dedicated to God above all things. God loves us so much that he created us for his eternal glory. But we human beings love ourselves so much that we forget God's plan in our lives. Indeed, we reject it and naively expect God to accept us in the midst of our wickedness. Only a false prophet comes to say that the commandments of God's law are not absolute. And today, there are many false prophets who accommodate sin as a weakness that must be acceptable by society. It is deplorable the state of most of the rulers of the world who support abortion, homosexuality, euthanasia, and so many other perversities that destroy the soul of human beings. Most politicians are liars who only seek to enrich themselves, grow in power, and dominate others. Many religious people preach a gospel that they themselves do not fulfill. The world is full of false doctrines, accommodations to a human reality that is totally distant from God. Man justifies all his sinful actions, and that is why it is so difficult for him to have a deep conversion. The world is without God's commandments. Repentance is no longer heard of even in the church. Few are the priests who fulfill their mission and fight for the salvation of souls. Most of them do their priestly role looking at their office as any other profession because they feel ashamed to talk to people about repentance. They do not dare to criticize people's wickedness. They give a solution quickly as if people did not have to stop sin. It seems that they all expect people to fall into sin again and again and wait for them with the same sins at the next confession. Most Catholics live in sin and simply confess it, that is, if they confess at all, and continue to sin without any remorse that would lead them to conversion. What good are the commandments to a man who confesses without the intention of not sinning again. How many there are who confess a certain sin and at the very moment are thinking of continuing to do the same? Do they think that the absolution they receive is of any use to them? Don't they realize that they are offending God with the same little game they don't intend to get out of? My wife and I lost our relationship with our son because we repeatedly asked him to leave sin and come to the Lord. How many families are in the same circumstances, but most of them accept the sin of their children, and instead of evangelizing, they become accomplices of their children's sins. Sinners paradise, yes. This is a paradise for all sinners, because from the time they are very young, children are already twisting themselves to the consent of their parents. Parents do not teach them the commandments of God's law. They do not correct their faults. They do not disapprove of the wickedness they learn in schools. They do not care if their sons or daughters become corrupt. Moreover, there are so many parents who facilitate their homes so that a son or a daughter can bring their partner and sleep in sin with all their support. 
All this happens for fear of losing those sons or daughters that they have not educated morally. Consequently, we live in worse times than those of Sodom and Gomorrah. From the top of the church resound false doctrines in favor of homosexuals, abortion, obedience to the United Nations, and not to God. We hear daily of new scandals within the church because the vocation for the world has become stronger than the priestly vocation. We have few good priests left. We really only have a small remnant of men dedicated to God who can be counted on our hands. The world is already being ruled by the evil one. We are in the kingdom of Satan. God is no longer welcome in the laws of men, which were formerly inspired by the law of God. Now the laws are inspired by evil, by the convenience of a few at the cost of others. The corruption of civil and ecclesiastical rulers is a rottenness that makes his fetid odor reach to the highest heavens. The world has become the whorehouse of men the paradise of carnal pleasures, the scene of continuous crimes, injustices, and the place abhorred by God. This is why the moment of divine justice is approaching. And who will be able to remain standing at his coming? Malachi 3 verse 2. And woe to those teachers of the word of God who have not spoken with courage, who have compromised the commandments by preaching a soft doctrine to men, a false mercy that will lead many souls to hell. Dear brother, sister, it is time to repent with severity. It is time to leave sin behind. No more contemplations in our self-love. God is angry, and very soon we will face his justice. May God bless you and purify you from all unrighteousness. May God make his dwelling place in your heart and give you the satisfaction of being in a state of grace when he comes. If you like this video, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, The Work of God, share on social networks, and don't forget to leave your valuable comments. Please share with us what you think about your own conversion. God bless you.